Anyone that had a cultured childhood in the 2000s would know that mobile gaming was amazing. We had Subway Surfers, Temple Run, Angry Birds, and plenty more. Now, if you were into technology the way I was, or delusional like I was, you definitely tried to play GTA 5 on some cheap Android phone or tablet at least once. For me, that was numerous times. I was literally on a journey to find a working way of getting this done. People who have been there also remember those sketchy YouTube videos with GTA 5 on a console, but with touchscreen controls edited over it out of pocket for that shit. so i believe that it was completely possible but little did i know the most you could do was barely cloud stream the game so i grew away from this and years after got an actual pc where i could play all of those beloved games i tried running on an lg tablet and that was fun but that still leaves the mystery can you run pc games on your phone and in 2025 yes you can I recently ran into a new application named WinLater, which is apparently a Windows emulator for Android which allows you to run Vulkan, OpenGL, and even DirectX games locally on your phone. Now how well does it work? Well, you'll see later, but let's get into how to set this up. Now before we start, I want to clarify that in this video I'm using Windows Subsystem for Android to walk you guys through how to set this up without recording from my phone. Because the absolute horrors of trying to get my phone screen into OBS and for everything to be smooth was just not worth the trouble. Now first, you want to go to the GitHub link in the description and download the latest release of WinLater, install it on your phone, and you're good to go. Now once you first open WinLater, it will install all the system files needed to Get this working correctly and once it all gets done then we'll go from there once it's done just click the plus sign and then you will see that you will be creating a new container now this is needed to get all the stuff set up and you want to pay very close attention to this because there's a lot of things that can either make or break this entire system so you can set this to whatever you want i'm going to keep it at container one because again this is on windows and i'm not trying to do this on windows there's no point but you see the screen size. What you want to do is you want to install CPU-Z on your phone and just look for what your resolution is. So it won't be 720p, it won't be 16 by 9. And then you want to set it here. So you want to click on it and then scroll up to custom and then set it. And the reason why you want to do this is because this will allow you to get widescreen and the entire screen will fit to your phone instead of being locked into a certain rectangle. Now, once you get done with that, you want to now move to graphics driver. Now, I will be honest, WinLater is very annoying to use, especially on a phone that is definitely not the greatest, which you'll see later, and you will need to do a lot of testing. This will not work easily right off the first boot. You will need to do a lot. So I would say to use CPU-Z to check what CPU and GPU your phone has, and you'll be able to see what graphics driver you should use. So my phone is actually a Adreno, so you would want to use Turnip, but if your phone is not an Adreno, you want to try Vortec, and then if your games are not loading, you wanna use VirGL. Now, VirGL is better for OpenGL games, Vortec is just better for all games, and then if you have a specific Adreno CPU, which is most of the time Snapdragon, you want to make sure that you use Turnip. So again, this can definitely change depending on what your CPU and GPU is and how new your phone is. Then you have the DX wrapper. This is also very important. The DXVK is for Vulkan, so mostly all of your games will be running in Vulkan unless you can get DirectX to run. I'm not really sure how to get that to run, but I'm pretty sure this DXVK just converts DirectX to Vulkan. So you have DXVK, you also have Wine D3D, you have VK D3D, and then you also have CNC D Draw. And I'm not sure what this one is, but I'm assuming this is maybe Vulkan to DirectX, and then this is DirectX to Vulkan, and then this is just using Wine's wrapper to get the game running. Then you have the audio driver. Make sure to set this on Pulse Audio. I'm pretty sure every phone supports Pulse Audio, so make sure it's on Pulse Audio. Show your FPS so that you can see how well your game is running. And that is it for the normal settings. You now wanna move down into your GPU name. Now, the reason why you wanna set this is because, again, 
this is technically emulating windows meaning that you want to make sure that your games don't see that you have a gtx 480 some games will just completely not run if it sees that your gpu is not supported so you want to click on this drop down and go until you find something like a 3070 two seconds later now i have the 3070 selected and you want to make sure that you have this so that no game just chooses not to open because you don't have a supported gpu and then go to advanced and make sure that your box 64 preset is set to performance for now you can change this in the future but set it to performance so that you can work your way up once you have this officially working then you have windows version set this to something maybe windows 10 or 11 i would say just windows 10 for now because it's really not that serious so windows 10 and then you have the processor affinity for 32-bit apps just max this out since this one is maxed out you might as well just max this out also and that is pretty much it now windows subsystem for android just stopped working it did not want to run any container so i ended up having to just use scr cpy to capture my phone's screen so i can show it to you guys here and this is what your container would look like so this looks very bare bones it won't look like windows but you can run xe files from here and i have actually tested it and it works now there is one thing that you want to do if you can get this to work you want to make sure that you download a exe file from github that will allow you to download everything you'll need so that you will never have any issues i will leave it in the description but once you have it installed you want to bring it here and put it into your files the d drive is your downloads so you'll see here that you can put it here and then run the exe file here so just double click or tap your screen two times on the exe run it and then you should be able to your start and then you'll see the aj start menu now this is very important this has a lot of things so for instance you have the component script you have install necessary files then you go to like offline content you can download wrappers you can download codecs download DirectX, net framework you can also download open al all the vc redis so you can download every single vc redis that you need then you also have x audio they just have a lot of things that will be very important now one thing that you want to do to make sure that your phone is actually good and that you have the right container is you want to go to system tools and open an application that comes with this now if this doesn't work then that is a sign that your phone is going to have a really big issue with this entire emulator so run it go back to system tools and then do test direct 3d and this should work there we go so as you can see this works and what that means is that your phone is working with direct 3d or direct x i guess i'm not really sure i'm not very knowledgeable of this but this is just a test to make sure that your phone can do all the calculations that it needs to render 3d things so now i want to go ahead and go over what happens once i try to open games so you'll see here that i have game here i'm going to go ahead and try to open it and it'll take some time because this is literally the screen from my phone which you can see is a Moto G7 power and it's it has a Snapdragon CPU but it's definitely not the fastest so it takes a minute to load and then you'll see what happens so that happens it just flickers meaning that the game is actually running but the game is just crashing at startup probably because there are some things that just aren't compatible with this emulator on my phone so it's not the emulator's fault it's my phone's fault so again if i change my api to something different you'll see that something completely different happens which will let you know that this can work if you have a decent phone and then we're back in and you can see the game right back here i'm going to go ahead and close the file explorer and then try to reopen it and you'll see that in about 30 seconds that the application gives a error that basically tells you what the issue is and there we go you can see that the issue is my phone just simply doesn't support vulcan now there could be something i'm missing from what i've searched 
apparently Snapdragon CPUs do support Vulkan, but I guess on my phone there are just issues. So I tried going to Virgil as I just did, and I went to the OpenGL3 driver, and then the game just opens and closes. So those are the type of things that I spent five hours trying to fix, and I just couldn't get any game to open. I tried Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, I tried Lego Batman 3, I tried this game, and I just simply couldn't get it to work. I tried two other games that I just can't remember, but that is a total of five games that I tried opening and none of them work. I will make a part two on this if I can figure out how to fix the Vulcan issue because VRGL is just not working well because VRGL is known for not running good at all performance wise, but the Vulkan APIs are working really good for performance and if I can get this to work, I will definitely make another video.